They were hairy animals, tree dwellers with a long tail and pointed ears, but the ladies preferred their companions without hair, so they chose the least hairy for mates. And that's how our ancestors lost their hair. So imagine Charles Darwin more than a century ago as he pondered the question of our origin. We were made, said Darwin, not in the image of God, but in the likeness of apes. London's Natural History Museum pays homage to Darwin in its Human Origins exhibit. The museum was first built to display the wonders of creation, but today it's a monument to evolution. This is the fossilized skull of an Australopithecine, OH5. Dr. Chris Stringer, a paleoanthropologist at the museum, is convinced that Darwin was right. We think that humans separated from apes about five million years ago, although there is not fossil evidence of that period of separation. From about four million years ago, we have evidence of these creatures called Australopithecines. And these creatures were ape-like in many ways, but they did walk upright, and certainly in their teeth, for example, they show human features. The famous Lucy is thought to be the earliest link in the tree of evolution but there's strong disagreement among the experts. Some claim Lucy and other Australopithecines are just extinct apes. Paleoanthropologist Dr. Sigrid Hartwig Scherer has studied the fossils closely. She concludes that they can all be classified as either extinct types of apes or true humans. These Australopithecines belong to one basic type and radiated into a different, into, into different niche, niches and so they could develop these very specialized things like um, the big molars and the very small front teeth and a very <coughs> fished face. I don't think they are the precursors of humans. Dr. Marvin Lubenau is Professor Emeritus at Christian Heritage College in San Diego. He's made a lifetime study of the ape men, and he's convinced that in the quest to find human ancestors, the fragmentary fossil evidence has been misinterpreted. The evolutionists believe that you and I evolved from a, uh, an ancestor of the chimpanzee. Now, the chimpanzees are not normally bipedal. They have relatively small brains, and they are not able to make tools with their hands. So the evolutionist has to somehow find an animal that has at least the uh, latent capacity to make tools, to walk erect, and uh, a relatively uh, large brain. The early evidence for the Australopithecines is strong in that they are an extinct primate. The evidence that they are related to us is non-existent. Just being able to find animals that they claim uh, may have walked erect does not prove that we evolved from them. Marvin Lubenau believes ape-like creatures never changed into people. God created apes as apes and humans as humans. Science journalist Richard Milton, in his book, Exploding the Myths of Darwinism, agrees with creationists that the fossils are either apes or true humans dressed up as ape men. Darwinists say that the missing link is Australopithecus. Um, the, the famous Lucy skeleton is a best, best known example of Australopithecus. In fact, Lucy has been restored in museums around the world to look like a human ancestor. She's usually given uh, a sort of an ape-like face and a human-like body with human hands, human feet. 
The truth is that um, Lucy's bones are actually those of an extinct arboreal ape. The hands and feet are those of a, a tree-dwelling creature, a creature that may have been able to come out of the trees occasionally, but certainly didn't spend um, the majority of its time walking upright. And many uh, anthropologists who've examined Australopithecus remains have come to the conclusion that it's nothing more than an extinct ape. It's only Darwinists who insist that Australopithecus is a, a human ancestor. And I think it's a pity school children today are told so firmly and so convincingly that Australopithecus is their ancestor when there is virtually no evidence to support that. A controversial hall of fame portrays our supposed evolutionary heritage of various ape men and one ape woman. But our ape man ancestors look more like a rogues gallery plagued by a history of misidentification of fragmentary fossil evidence with ape men reconstructed from the remains of apes, pigs and even a dolphin. The most notorious ape man, Piltdown Man, was hailed as the first Englishman for 40 years until it was recognized to be a fraud. The skull of a human combined with the jaw of an orangutan, artificially colored with its teeth filed down. As well as arguments over interpretation, there have, of course, also been examples, even worse examples. There was the case of um, the early American ape man, which turned out to be um, an extinct peccary or pig-like creature. So the whole history of the missing link really is, is, is been a rather sorry history as far as science is concerned. It's been a mixture of fraud, a mixture of error, a mixture of misinterpretation. There are things which don't fit easily. It depends which characters you want to pick as being your marker of humanity or of being ape-like. Um, so it's not a simple question. The story of human evolution with its gallery of disputed ape men is preached from the pulpit, popularized in news headlines, and taught as fact in schools and museums. The fossils of our supposed human ancestors, sometimes only tiny bits and pieces of bone and teeth, leave a lot to the imagination. There's disagreement among experts over what differentiates a fossil ape from a human ancestor. Interpretation of the evidence depends a lot on which worldview you accept, creation or evolution. Marvin Lubinar believes ape-like creatures never changed into people. God created apes as apes and humans as humans. This whole question stems from a reductionist and a humanistic attitude toward humans. The idea that humans are just animals that walk erect, have a large brain, and make tools. And the, the main point that the Bible emphasizes, as far as you and I are concerned as humans, is that we are made in the image of God. Most evolutionists deny the possibility of supernatural intervention in our lives. We're just naked apes. No destiny, no purpose. No more than human animals without soul or spirit. The key aspect of Darwinism, as far as we're concerned, is um, the question, where did we come from? Darwin's answer is that we and modern apes have evolved from some common ape-like ancestor uh, millions of years in the past. Well, this conclusion really isn't borne out by the evidence. What's happened is that uh, the theory has required a missing link, and workers in the field have, over the past hundred years, provided lots of missing links, or uh, have offered us um, lots of skeletons as being missing links. What's happened in every case is that once the, uh, the headlines have died down after the announcement of discovery, serious researchers have investigated the, the finds and they've found that either the fossil in question was an extinct ape or it was an extinct human. I think the view that you can divide the fossil record neatly into humans and non-humans uh, and all the things, uh, Australopithecines and Habilis are actually basically funny kinds of apes and all of the people later like Erectus and Neanderthals are basically funny kinds of modern humans. I don't think that works when you get to something like say Homo habilis. A habilis has um, a brain size that's greater than that of, uh, of any ape, uh, any fossil ape we have as well. Um, and certainly in the dentition, habilis was human. Homo habilis came to fame with the discovery by Richard Leakey 
of a controversial skull named 1470 that made headlines as the world's oldest man. He was called Handyman because he was believed to be handy with tools, and he's the next supposed ape man. He's said to resemble a chimpanzee with a brain the size of a gorilla. It is the organization of the brain, not the size per se, that matters. It's the way the brain is wired that makes it human. If you had a gorilla brain and had some kind of a machine that you could uh, blow it up uh, four times to 1,600 cubic centimeters, you wouldn't have a human brain. You'd have a, just a king-sized gorilla brain. And he'd be just as dumb as the gorilla is now. So this is 1470. It indeed has a large brain size, but there are also features in, this, in the face and other features which just remind very much to some Australopithecine features. It's just a variety maybe of an Australopithecine with a big brain and a typical Australopithecine face. At University College London, a research group led by Dutch anatomist Dr. Fred Spoor found something unexpected. What the organ of balance tells us is that this creature was perhaps less, even less bipedal than Australopithecines. And that's obviously very controversial. CAT scans of the inner ear show that the semicircular canals which determine balance and locomotion are more like those of baboons than of humans. The organ of balance is situated somewhere here in the, in the side, this is your ear opening. And if you look at the organ of balance, then a very prominent bit of it are these three semicircular canals. And those turn out to be quite diff different in, in dimensions in humans than, than in other primates. It's claimed that Homo habilis walked more erect than his supposed evolutionary ancestors, the Australopithecines, like the famous Lucy. What you call Homo habilis, the kind of often seen as a kind of inter intermediate species between the Australopithecines and Homo erectus. And that was actually a surprise what we found there, because um, what we found in the, in the size of the same circular canals and the whole structure of the inner ear, it wasn't intermediate at all between, um, between what we saw in Homo erectus and the Australopithecines. Interestingly enough, I got support from other findings in East Africa. They found that their limb bones are less adapted for bipedalism, for walking on two legs, and are more ape-like than Australopithecines, than, for instance, Lucy. Um, it was actually less, less evolved, you can say, toward in the direction of what you see in, in, in humans than what you see in Australopithecines. That's not what you would expect if you want to put it all nicely on, uh, on one line. Uh, the traditional view of that, that human evolution kind of evolved in one line with us at the end. So is Homo habilis truly an ancestor? Many experts agree that this ape man is actually a mixture of bones from many different species. I finally decided Homo habilis was made up of at least two, if not more, different groups that do not belong together. It was a, a, an assemblage of, of several different types of animals put together and made into one. Homo habilis is a mess. And along with that goes the main transition from the Australopithecines to Homo erectus in modern humans. Just because we say habilis is not a human ancestor, maybe, uh, as I would say for, for Neanderthals as well. It doesn't mean that that makes them apes. I guess the majority of researchers now feels that homo, what we used to call Homo habilis is not a single species, but are, is a kind of waste bin of various fossils that are grouped together and kind of intermediate between Australopithecines and Homo erectus, and let's call it all one name and we don't know. But more and more people recognize it's at least two species, maybe even more. Yes, habilis is a problem taxon. I think there are at least two species represented. And I think we haven't any longer got the clear-cut progression from habilis to erectus. So where is the transition? According to the evolutionist scheme, archaic humans descended from Homo erectus, upright man, the next supposed ape man. 
The appearance of real humans in the fossil record, that comes with the species Homo erectus. And this creature had uh, a large brain. It was definitely a, a good stone tool maker. There's the beginnings of evidence of hunting in the fossil record. And uh, its skeleton was much more human in proportions. Homo erectus is truly human. All of the things that we could expect of the uh, archaeological record uh, to show humanity had been found. Uh, stone tools in association, uh, about half of the, uh, at about half of the sites, the controlled use of fire in about a tenth of the sites, uh, burial in some of the Australian sites, the uh, decoration of the bones with, uh, with, with red ochre, together with the fact that the brain size is fully within modern humans. We are dealing with true humanity by true humanity. I mean descendants of people created by God on day six and fully created in the image of God. I believe that Homo erectus belongs to the basic type of humans. Mm, it has got specific human-like features and quite a number. You could place them together with the other human forms into one basic type, so they um, are true humans. Yes, I mean, Homo erectus is truly human. Uh, I have no difficulty with that. By calling it Homo erectus, we're putting it in the genus Homo. It is a human. It's more primitive, uh, it's earlier in time, but indeed could have changed through time. But yes, erectus was human. Now, there is a difference, and the difference is, uh, among other things, the rather heavy brow ridges that they have uh, in keeping with Neanderthal. I personally feel that Homo erectus is just a smaller version of Neanderthal. Homo erectus has been depicted as a primitive, stooped ape man, but Fred Spoor's CAT scans show they walked just as we do. What we found there um, is that their organal balance was completely modern human-like. They had this enlargement of the canals. It's, it's really like us. Um, and that doesn't come as a surprise, because if we, if we look at the whole, we know the skeleton, um, uh, from, especially from, uh, from Africa, we know the skeleton of Homo erectus pretty well. Um, and it's very clear that they really look like us. They're in the, below, the, below the neck. They're, they're very similar to us and so that their organal balance is the same as well, and that, that they probably make, made any kind of locomotion movement that we did, that they were sophisticated in their, in their running and everything. The question then is obviously, what happens in between? Where is the transition? And that was, um, so far, uh, quite problematic. After the Piltdown hoax, there were no more ape man discoveries in England until headlines announced that Boxgrove Man was found in 1986. At least, a fossilized tooth and part of a chewed human shin bone had been discovered among scattered animal fossils on a coastal plain near Boxgrove. Dr. Mark Roberts who directs the excavation, classifies the finds as Homo heidelbergensis. Well, we found here, despite the masses of archaeology and butchered bone, only two pieces of uh, human bone or material um, from two individuals. Firstly, we found a tibia, um, a shin bone of an individual in the upper silt level. Um, both ends of this tibia have been gnawed by a wolf and so it was probably transported in here. And then last year during the excavations we found two teeth. 
The fossils are claimed to be half a million years old, according to the Vole clock, which correlates the age of the fossils with the estimated age of an extinct vole. Was he a stooped, hairy ape man? Well, the answer, I think, is an emphatic no. When we've looked at our initial analysis um, using computed tomography of the, of the bone, we can see that this is an individual that's used to a very active lifestyle. We've been able to ascertain from the um, tibia that this was a, a large individual. That's why we call it Boxgrove Man, because we assume that it, that, that it is a male through the sheer size of the bone. And they may well have been quite dark, but stooped, no, there's no they're not stooped at all. These, these are big, strong, physical individuals. Already they're, they're getting to the top of the tree. They're already perceived as being a top dog in the animal hierarchy. Hairy? Well, they may have been a bit hairy, but stooped and no. The first ape man to be discovered was Neanderthal man, depicted as a stooped, hairy, club-wielding brute. Over the years, as more skeletons were discovered, the Neanderthals were found to be truly human, with larger brains than ours and a sophisticated culture. We would have had this double arch brow ridge over the eyes. Uh, again, that would have been very distinctive, so the eyes would have been set under that very strong brow ridge. There would have been virtually no chin. The middle of the face was pulled out. The body would have been uh, short and wide, very thick set, very muscular. This replica here is of the Neanderthal from La Ferrecy in France, and it has a very large brain, bigger than the modern average, those characteristic double arch Neanderthal brows, the big nose, and at the front, very heavily worn teeth with this characteristic rounding wear. Uh, recognize a human walking upright, no bent knees, uh, not got arms and hands that scrape on the floor, but nevertheless uh, quite different to anyone we have living on the planet today. Evolutionists recognize that there is no clear-cut progression from early ape men to modern humans, but they don't question the assumption that evolution somehow did occur. Paleoanthropologists who study the human fossil record can risk careers and research funding if they don't accept the conventional evolutionist model of human origins. In Germany, at the University of Munich, one expert on human fossils dares to disagree. The framework which I base my science on is um, that one written in the Bible, and I believe that um, God created in basic types, and um, that these basic types diversified um, when they had to repopulate the Earth. Creationists believe the human fossils belong to the early descendants of Noah's family, many of them cave dwellers, attempting to survive in a hostile world. And you have a succession of forms in the Pliocene came the Australopithecine radiation and they uh, filled the whole East and South African realms and then there came humans and after a while they spread throughout Europe and Asia. So there was like migration waves covering more or less of the old world. Migration of animals happened more quickly than human migration, so ape fossils are typically found below the oldest human fossils. According to the creationist model, the distribution of ape-like creatures resulting from migration patterns in harsh conditions after the flood is often misinterpreted as an evolutionary progression. The hypothetical evolutionary tree is conventional wisdom, but there's disagreement among the experts. There are disputes and there's confusion over casts of skulls reconstructed from bits of bone, and many dissenters are skeptical of the ape-man claims. Some evolutionists themselves are convinced that Australopithecines are not human ancestors. Lucy is just an extinct ape. Many experts recognize that Homo habilis is a waste bin of various species and not a valid category. And evolutionists agree with creationists that Homo erectus, together with other ancient human forms, are distinct variants of true humans. 
So where are our ape man ancestors? Some evolutionists say they've been found. Others have doubts, but all have faith that ape men existed and someday will be found. Creationists say they have not been found and will never be found for one good reason. They never existed. We were made in the image of God.